is one of my champs and goes for it. And I think it works really well here. I mean, you've got a, a Stefelios there that you can threaten the back line alongside a ton of dive with the Aatrox, the Akali as yep. well. So I think it just works out super well, especially when you're looking at things like the Stefelios that will be quite vulnerable with the way this competition set up at the moment. And look at the bands, right? Tom Ketch, what is the <laughs> default support? We're like, oh, uh, uh, this is not a comp I want to be anyone but Siverin to. Uh, Tom Kench fan. Unironically, I think Morgana, uh, reasonably playable, although when you don't know your support matchup, there are some really bad ones for Morg out there. Uh, but if you're trying to save someone from a Vi, that actually can work well. Uh, we'll see what it comes through, though. Uh, obviously, both solos are grabbed. Impact will get counterpicked for top lane. Yeah, I'm really curious now what Waco goes for, though. Because with MF, Ezreal, Caitlyn, Kalista all off the board, like, with the Aphelios there, I nearly want to say you want to go for some sort of range, but instead, looks like they might actually just go for... No, they're going to swap over. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I think here, that makes a lot of sense, right? Just getting more zone control in these team fights against someone like Aphelios makes a ton of sense. A ton of self-heal as well. So making sure that you're going to be on the safe side of that AD carry matchup. Yeah, you're kind of just playing whatever. Um, you don't know your support matchup. You don't know if you're going to get any safety from your own support, if they're going to be helping with the dive. You know, if you get like a Leona or like a Nautilus coming through. So, eh, whatever. Thresh has some safety. If Vi is the only diver, she's not going to solo kill you unless you're absurdly behind. So you can land in a safety. You're going to be kind of okay. Can zone everyone else out. Uh, but again, you need impact counter pick. Now in the opener, he went for Renekton, played weak side, and then got absurdly outscaled. Obviously, Fiora is a very... I would say solo queue-esque counter pick where you get to carry and all the CC is so telegraphed, you get free reposts, but goes for the cannon. We've seen uh, Evi, Evi, sorry, yeah. Evi play it twice. <laughs> My brain went to Levi. Uh, and we're like, that's not the same player. Um, Evi's played it twice to pretty decent effect. Uh, cannon definitely can can lane bully, has good team fight pressure, and also is a, is a defender. Where yeah. if Akali and, and Co. dive in, you're like, I pressed R and Aphelios lives. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, the ability to just sit on this Aphelios and go, cool, you're going to be totally safe. It's going to be all fine. So I'm really curious now to see how Beyond want to try and approach this because they're going to go for the Rakan. I thought they might go for the Nautilus because you just have that little bit of safety there with the Thresh, but I still think Rakan, Zaya, super strong bot lane. So you've got a ton of opportunities now for your top lane. Will be a bit of a skill matchup. You'll probably see Husha going up there to try and help out Lykey in that early stages. Whereas you've got like Minju's just going to be fine farming up and that bot lane is a bit self-sufficient as well. So I definitely think when you look at Beyond Gaming trying to play up towards Lykey like we saw them yesterday with Loud is going to be the best way here. All right, I'm excited for it there. Beyond off to one and O start here at the World Championship. I'd seen a lot of people call Group A the group of life. And then it's like, oh, EG, not playing with Danny. Oh, Fnatic, not playing with their bot lane. One, I know we're casting for English, so we're casting with a lot of NA fans who are waiting to see if EG can turn it up here in this one. And yeah, there are pieces here that look pretty good for them. Uh, Beyond Gaming, though, still off to the races, and we are on to the Rift here for the fifth game of the day. Very excited to see how this one's going to pan out, because it does feel like Beyond, I mean, sitting with one victory at the moment, definitely trying to see if they can push themselves up and kind of have a bit of a... Uh, fight back from MSI as well, kind of prove that they're able to push in towards that group stage. Uh, and they have been a region, the PCS, that has traditionally done quite well at international events. So a lot of eyes are on them at the moment to see if they can perform. Minions yeah, it's one of the interesting fallen. kind of topics is, uh, uh, Marksy put out a video a while ago about like, what are NA's chances at Worlds really? And it's like, pretty solidly LCS is the number four, exactly number four league, you know? And it's like, but then like number five is kind of the PCS, right? Like, and that, that's kind of been a de facto for the last few years. Uh, you know, occasional there's hits up, but like, you know, I remember like in 2015 was when AHQ and Flash Rolls like both made quarters at Worlds and it's like, it's been kind of quiet since then, unfortunately. And that's like so long ago, but yeah, Beyond are doing very well right now in the playing group stage, you know, playing for number one. And it feels like Beyond are kind of keeping that AHQ Esports dream alive, right? Like they took their spot in the PCS and are now kind of carrying that mantle. And it feels like for guys like Minji and Wako as well, like especially for Wako had to like, replace Doggo, who was like the lifeblood of Beyond Gaming, for him to try and step into those shoes and then try and carry Beyond Gaming once more. It feels like he's had a lot to live up to. And I mean, they finished in sixth in the regular split, then end up having to beat third, second, all the way up to play against Fine Oysters. It's cool to see them here now. Oh, a quick fight in the Mandan Inspired, gonna flash in for some lands to kill, lands to chain. First Blood in for Evil Genies is some digital goods claimed for First Blood. And if you wanna link your league account with Prime Gaming, you can receive your own free digital goods. Look at that segment. Way. Easy as you like, but really well done by EG. I think as well, focusing Minji is definitely the best way to go about it. He had a great game in the LeBlanc yesterday, but was kind of given a lot of free reign thanks to Husha. Getting in early here, Inspire does a really good job of waiting with that Sonic Wave to connect and picks up first blood. It was really, really beautiful stuff. I'm always a fan of a jungler who's like, I'm gonna flash for the non skill shot, the rest will land afterwards. JoJo, I think, yeah, it's level two afterwards. Barely lands it too. That was nearly sidestepped. 
Yeah, I mean, just a really nice job, though. I mean, even taking the Tempest Cripple level 2 to make sure that he could actually get that damage off and making sure that he was able to follow up with the Sonic Wave. Because usually you would take the Safeguard level 2, give yourself a bit of a healthier clear, yeah. but working out super well and hushing out. Looks like he's trying to respond, but Wave not in the best of spots to try and do so. But aggressive trade, keep in mind, if he is on cooldown, yeah, the Q flash follow. Is there the rest of it, though? Auto, he's going to land into the tower. Shot one, shot two will kill. At least he was tagged. We're going to go to Jojo Pion, but an assisted kill is more gold, and his wave is gone. And the teleport is still here for Jojo Pion as well, so he'll still get back. So one for one, gets to come in and pick up most of his wave. So all said and done, still a good trade for EG. He's got the scoreboard right now. 600 gold lead evil geniuses. When they went to MSI, it was a little bit of a rough show, but so much of it when they had gone, when they won in spring, was Danny in the bottom lane, kind of feeding the puppy. Oh, that is a good hook, though. Looks like Flay is not up. He, of course, has Lantern. It might have been on cooldown. Can't put him in the turret. But Joe Japan has really stepped up since MSI and has been one of the bigger and bigger carries for EEG. And you can see him here. Uh, yeah, get some help from Inspired, sure, but he is off to the race here in this mid lane. Yeah, and usually we talk about Inspired and Jojo Pyum, but it looks like Inspired is his eyes on top side instead, but this wave crashing, like he might be in trouble. No jungler here. You can see Hush is on that bottom side, so this could be devastating for the Aatrox to lose big wave. Do they have the damage to kill him? Cole, Potion still up. Kauri dodging away from some. Zaya damage. Farm really close between the two. Ooh, and round two on the Jojo Pion. Of course, no summoners up anywhere. Full health, and they decide, no, not going to go for it right then. Joji walks up for a trade. Then Impact getting chunked 200 HP there. At least I think it's a good trade. Q not going to land. Inspire just here to shepherd the wave in and let Impact reset. Yeah, it should be fine. And you can see Jungle Camp's trade as well. Inspired end up taking the Krogs on top side. You're going to go Husha taking those Raptors as well. So overall, kind of both junglers trying to play towards each of their strengths. And at the moment, Minji definitely trying to get that help to try and reset. But it's been a bit of a bad start for him in this mid lane. But pressure kind of all around the board, right? So Inspired pulled top side to help Impact get a reset. And the bot side, Kauri kind of needs the same thing. This wave is bad for him. His health bar is low. Vulcan shields what he can. But Beyond Gaming are definitively winning this bottom lane. Great QE combo. Wakao gets him even lower down to 150. And it's like, yep, Inspired. You just Your your job jungling was pushing top lane. Now let's help out bot lane. We got to get this wave in so we can reset. You yeah. lost your Raptors? Sorry, bud. Yeah, I mean, you need something to try and fix this, especially as we talk about, like, Wako in that later portion of the game being the big carry for uh, Beyond Gaming. I mean, he's first in damage per minute coming out of the PCS, first for damage percent with 33, but Jojo goes for a bit of a hectic trade there. Yep, at the end of the day, though, as long as you have a mana pool, your sustain is overall better. Now, at this point, no mana items yet, so uh, has the haste, and indeed, it's going to be Inspired just taking the wave. Coward needed his reset. Got Berserker's Greaves. Uh, but you really want to get Noon Quiver on the recall, which I'm pretty sure Wako can easily afford. Yeah, definitely. I mean, CS lead, plus he also had that long yeah. start, so he's going to be totally fine. I think this is where, again, I feel a little bit worried for EG because this is now a different look for them. They're going to be trying to play for those late game fights with the Aphelios, but the Aphelios are ready to start to fall pretty far behind. And as well, when you're looking at Wako just being able to take bit of that turret play, get that CS lead. He has been that late game insurance as well for Beyond Gaming. So the fact that he's getting off to this great start is a little bit worrying for Evil Geniuses. We got Rakan waiting around on the mid-side saying, hey, if you steal if you steal a Kali, you'll go for me. He's got the CZ to back him up. So not going to be much of a play here. Mid lane CS equal, but a wave to farm. So Joji Pion up around six to seven and Inspire gets his second camp in about as many minutes as he's finally, he took the bottom side Krugs, but uh, find the back of his old to keep going. And you can see Wako actually moved up towards mid lane as well to try and support that play because he knows that, look, this wave is going to crash, but we can slowly start to push out this bot wave. You've got eight minutes just around the corner. So by the time he pushes out this next wave, they can start to rotate up after creating that slow push towards that Rift Herald and then try and use the advantages that Wako already has right now and see if they can try and play for that advantage. Alrighty, so far looking at if there's going to be pressure towards the top side to gank this cannon. And as you mentioned, Harold as well. One minute till it spawns. Mountain Drake, the tankiest of them all, still up. Generally, we've seen in this tournament, I would say, fairly late Drake takes on average. It feels slower than what I'm used to casting LCS and watching everywhere else. That's been the really curious one. Been, look, I'm an LPL guy. Uh -huh. Like, even you saw RNG yesterday. Like, two dragons already by the 15-minute mark. Yeah. But hold on. Oh, gets the flash in time. Wasn't a charm available for level four in the support. Means you have the reflexes to get away. But that is still a summoner down and a great engage by Kino. Yeah, really nice. Especially if you are... Oh, hang on. Inspired. Had the level six. Was trying to get in behind Minji, but just about able to sure can flip away. But if you are now looking at these fights for Rift Herald, for things like Dragon, well, now you've got a flash to Sephelios and a push ain't far off level six. So suddenly things become significantly more hard, are, are difficult for carrying these fights. But Wave is in and once again, they go to top side. Now, it is interesting to take your control ward. It feels like 
Every time you kill one, you're like, all right, we took our turn to kill the ward, but no, they're going to stick around, and Lee Kai just going to stay here. TP is not up for Minji. Ulti gets rid of the wave. Pushed it in, 300 health left, and I don't know how you live. Sidesteps the first bit, but Jojo can show up, kick into the wall, and Jojo gonna shark the kill. Another one on the board, three to one. EG take their turn topside, and Minji goes, that means we can go bot. Yeah, it was a brave play in top for like to see if he could try and trade, but now Beyond gonna try and respond. Push it is in the wings, but they're waiting on a ward, and I mean, Carry and Vulcan, they can't really back away at this stage. Nope, but they have TP from Impact, but an ultimate cannon's not much. Vile into the tower, play by some time. They got kill number one and two, a trade back. Vulcan stays alive, but they can reset the aggregate, back to zero damage, and then start yet again. Hook comes in in a vibe, but he only buys a second for himself. Flashes the knockup, replays away, here. and Kino nearly dies. Trade has got to get in there, flashes in, takes an ulti, and now he can dive the enforcer. And look at that, evil. Geniuses are six and three. EG take a bow. That was gorgeous. Immediately Jojo Pyun inspired. Reset off the top plate. They start to move bot and are in time just there to save Vulcan from his inevitable doom. And beyond, absolutely in tatters after that play. <sighs> Jojo Pyun heard people talk and smack this man. Yeah. Is five and one where he goes beyond gaming dies. But I think it was really, it's really interesting to see because that's been one of the big uh, talking points for Jojo Pion, right? Is like what he learned from MSI. Look at people like Faker. Look at people like Xiaohu. How they interact on the map to help their team. Well, he makes the play top and immediately he's already moving bot lane to make sure that he's there for this second play as well. So it's a bit of a messy dive initially for Beyond Gaming where they don't lead with Husha, which means Kino ends up missing. But Vulcan just takes it nice and slow, ends up flashing away from the knockup again. And Jojo Pion here, perfect timing, gets the engage. Follow up, but here we go again. All right, Minji gonna walk back towards the tower, Shuriken's backwards, but now is Keen of the target, possibly. Ulti's back up, yeah, Charm available here for Jojo. Wants to land the chains, but jumped away. Still, though, it means that Harold goes over. He's still top lane. Nine CS lead for Impact, and happy with an assist to his name. Harold also belongs to EG. Mid lane kill score. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double. This is everything EG wants, they have. Yeah, I was laughing. It's like the nine CS lead top is like, that's a five kills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going down the line, yeah. okay? Some of them aren't very special. In bot lane, it's, uh, he's alive. <laughs> yeah, we take those, we take those. But, I mean, Jojo is just massive right now, and it's great to see him popping off here, because, again, like, taking the Silas first pick, he knew what he wanted to do, and he's achieved it so well. Even getting those early roams off to help out both side lanes, and now you've set up with already the Everfrost complete, that you can keep control over this mid lane. Husha and also Kino are going to have to give a ton of resources to try and make sure that Minji can stay safe, and even if he ends up getting pushed in all the time, cool, just lean in towards these neutral objectives. It's so easy to play off the pressure that Jojo Pion has now. All right, well, let's see if EG can play it forward. Mountain Drake, certainly useful. Extra armor, MR, keep you alive against the Assassins, which is certainly possible here. Just the Lantern back to safety, though. It's EG taking a reset. I assume he's getting... I'm just going to guess it's Noon Quiver and, like, Cloak of Agility. I'm not sure what money he has, but uh, certainly wants a decent recall and probably more than just Cloak itself. Let's see what comes through and oh, what EG wants to go for next, because, yeah, as you're mentioning, Drake is up and... Ah, oh, actually stops the recall, so never mind. Um... But yeah, I'm always I'm always like nervous when like we're winning, but we're not stacking Drakes yet. But like, yeah. But what if they come back in 20 minutes? We could have had Mount Soul already, you know. Just like, <laughs> maybe that's wrong, but EG certainly don't seem too pressured to play for that one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like as an LPL guy, like we just see <laughs> dragons are like always taken. So a very like we usually have a soul hit like 23 to 25 minutes. So it's super rare for me when I start to look at international. I'm like, oh, it's way slower comparatively and I agree with you in that respect where it's like oh if you have these advantages like even with Wako how they'd already set themselves up with a good advantage in that bot side mm. you then lean that pressure over towards the dragon you know just make sure that you're able to pick that one up start yourself stacking get some extra stats underneath your wing as well but just haven't quite got it now for beyond gaming and let's see if EG are going to try and make a play but push it already in mid lane alongside Kino yeah, better damage here across the mid laners four versus one ah, Vulcan's here four versus two is there the trade not going to get in for anything else. This shield is enough to display anything going on. The lantern back to safety. But this is what we're talking about with uh, Husha and Kino, right? They have to give these resources mid because Jojo Pion would just run amok otherwise. And now Inspired gets to move up towards top side. But you're also giving time for Kerry to just farm himself back into the game on bot side. He was substantially down. Now he's got a big lead for himself. And even EG helping out impact in this top side as well now. Yeah. Most injured tower. I mean, you got five plates fully up in mid. You really, anytime you summon a Herald, you really want to have two plates killed by hand before you summon it, and you're like, we could probably work down the last one by hand. Indeed they can, so Impact going to be the beneficiary of a whole lot of gold. 
then very fortunate that Inspired has a lane he can summon on where the rest of the money comes across. So this is a huge gold lead. Now you can see a solid 4,000. And EG are playing the best game of the tournament so far against an undefeated team. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, they're just playing the map well, right? Like, it, there are definitely some kills, don't get me wrong, a lot of them in mid lane, but a huge amount of this is just using that pressure that they have in different positions and catching Beyond Gaming with their pants down. Beyond now are going to turn over towards that Dragon, which I think is going to be pretty good for them, just in kind of trying to get something back for themselves in the map, but we'll have to see what EG want to try and do with the time they've been afforded here. Looks like it's just going to be a scuttle smite fight. Yeah. Yeah, but it's only up for one side, and he's like, ah, you probably have it. Like, I'm just going to walk away from this one. Thanks for Leash. JoJo wants to come back in, has not yet stolen the Zaya ult. He doesn't really need to anyway. Pops it now, but of course you can't pull him back. Doesn't have Blade Collar. Still, though, pretty solid hit. Flashes in. JoJo gets one, but now locked down to the tower. Shield from his jungler. Pops the stopwatch, and just a bounce house. This Rakan cannot get away. EG get a two for zero. Great stopwatch from Jojo there, keeps himself alive, and they get a second kill off the play as well. Now they're getting plates on bot side, it won't be going towards uh, Kauri, but you're definitely going to be happy that you're still getting more of these plates before they just fall in a couple seconds time. Plate number three should be not Maybe. risk. Ah, I guess they're, cho they're choosing not to risk it. Uh, the, yeah, uh, turret plates fell without getting claimed, but choosing tempo, choosing to not get anything weird happening. I think maybe, you know, Aatrox and Fog, maybe it just looks bad. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the game plan is here now, though, because, like, as you can see, Jojo Pyun, he's got full control of these side lanes. He does a really good job here working with Woken to make this play uh, happen. Wacko has the cleanse there, and Kino comes in just to try and keep that hook at bay, but the follow-up here is brilliant. Jojo knows he has the stopwatch, tanks the turret up, Inspired ends up walking out, and it just gives enough time for that terror to reset and let the mid laner get on out of dodge. Yeah, really well done right now. So you can see, yep, full seven turret plates, five from top, two from bottom. And once again, Vulcan here just to, to hold the wave, you know, play it backwards. I assume his lantern's back on cooldown because, all right, I feel it's going to be range of time. Yeah, and this is where I like the way EG are setting up here, right? Jojo doesn't have TP, so send him into topside. He can threaten on towards Lycane, especially when you've got a minute until the Rift Herald. Let's see if they can make a play, and there's no tower. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Bolt. He's got the ulti. He's got a TP in his back pocket now as well from a teammate, so Jojo going to pop. Aatrox will try to get away, but not just yet. Empowered healing might help, but not nearly enough. Shut down, coming through, 800 gold on the Minji. Just walking immediately over all that vision. Beyond Gaming are able to respond, so nice bit of pickup there for Minji. Like he will respond with a TP to bot side as well to make sure that he can match impact on this terror push. Now Beyond Gaming at least getting a shutdown and some gold back over needed in their favor. Good mechanics by impact, gets a stun, then gets the sidestep to get out of the chain, so takes the better part of that trade, but with Eclipse done, you just have more Omni Vamp here. Any, pretty much any trade, long term, just favors Aatrox because he'll be back to full health and impact it's so eats, eats a potion. It's so dumb. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. Every the item is strong. strong. It's, it's just so dumb. But look, I think at the moment, Beyonder trying to find these ways to get back into it, right? And one over extension there from EG was a nice punish. Now we got to see if they can try and mount anything here for Rift Herald, but with both TPs already invested towards making that play happen, it feels like they're just not really in a position now to try and contest this, especially as JoJo and Impact both have their own TP, so they will just hand this over. But I'd love to see them try and make some sort of cross map here, like make a play on towards Impact on this bot side, or do something with the fact they're not investing time towards this Rift Herald. Yeah, but of course, Drake two minutes away means you can't do much for it. Bot lane, yeah, maybe the look, but Aatrox will be wanting the cannon and no one is around. Vi, pass it a base towards the bottom side, so saying, well, that's probably where the option is. Uh, maybe because Camp Climber's actually, indeed, his Gromp is up, and he's like, yeah, I'm just farming, actually. We're not even going to make a play down here, because, yeah, you could have, right? You could have brought down your support. You could have kept Vi to say, actually, I'm going to skip Gromp. We're going to run down. We're going we're gonna to ward the path through the bottom side jungle and look for a 3v1 tower dive. There's no stopwatch, like the dive will work, um, and maybe the tower. Even just vision for a dragon, right? I mean, a minute 20 till that, you are, you've, you're fundamentally a pick comp here with Beyond as well. I mean, with the Vi, the Rakan, yeah. the Akali as well, your opportunity to find a couple of picks in that jungle as a EG are trying to get established could work, but it's not going to be the case. So EG, at least with themselves now, back into that bottom side, have kind of kept that vision at bay and should be able to contest this dragon in a minute's time. You're already seeing those resets coming through and a Gale Force already for Kauri sets himself up nicely and uh, Jojo Pion is just so far ahead of everyone, it's insane. Yeah, the important thing to track though, I think it's something that's always very relevant is the item timers themselves though. When do the completions come through? Because right now, Jojo Pion has a, has, has a, has a mythic and a really garbage component item <laughs> that doesn't do anything. Until Zonius is done, that is a broken stopwatch and a couple of stats. So he's functionally, despite being up three kills, 
at the same items. Actually, less because Vinci has a stopwatch that's not broken. He still hasn't reset, though. It looks like he wants to try right. to put pressure on towards this top side. So trying to get as much out of this play as possible. So, But I'm kind of surprised, right? Because 20 seconds now, you feel like EG would have liked to try and contest Vision and River, but they're fully committing to having this push onto top. Minji will now respond and yeah. doesn't have teleport. So looks like that's going to be the play, but... And at least EG should be able to move in. Beyond will spot them, though, if they try to move into that river area. And there's Azonia's. As Jiji Fun says, well, I'm willing to commit teleport if required, but we have enough pressure that I can take the late reset. It's going to be OK. Uh, maybe he's just right about it, because Evil Geniuses have indeed TP'd him down. And guess what? They are on the Drake. A TP-less Akali is holding top lane. And Evil Geniuses were able to maximize gold income. They burn a five-minute cooldown. OK. And off of the Drake, they are one to one. Yeah, and you even get Botlane Terror here for impact as well, just with the amount of pressure that was there. So nicely done by EG. And again, being able to figure out how they want to try and approach the map. A huge amount of this hasn't been like, you know, hands diff. It's been a bit of, hey, we're just going to figure out how we want to set ourselves up on the map correctly. And now we've even got a Rift Terror for mid lane. They won't quite kill the tower, but it should be at least crash, put it down below 1,000. The question is, will anything more happen afterwards? Recon ulti stolen. Indeed, this Shelly will drop 25 gold, hand it back over to Wako. As we wait a long time for item number two. Kauri on his way towards mainly Bloodthirster as the more defensive option. I wouldn't have been shocked to see Shield Bow if he's like, actually, it's just about me not dying. Doesn't even matter. Like, we're just going to not die to a Kali Vi, but uh, did go Gale Force with the option. Jojo now wants to fight Minji. Not going to get it, though. Actually, down a level, I will say, that as many kills he's gotten, he has spent so much time roaming around the map. That is a 30 CS lead for the Beyond Gaming mid laner, as well as that plus level. So, again, not in the worst fight here, the Akali, but still hasn't catching up to do. Yeah, and that's the thing at the moment is that EG haven't really been establishing themselves fully in the side lanes. It's kind of been a, hey, we're going to push and move, whereas you've just been consistently collecting these waves as Beyond Gaming. So I think this is where we're going to start to see now EG really put a bit more focus on to, okay, well, let's get this mid lane turret down. Then we can try and operate in a little bit of a 1-3-1 and just use the fact that Jojo is so far ahead that we can actually make a ton of plays around him, even just moving inspired over. You have the Zonyas, you can go for more aggressive dives and use that Zonyas to, to keep the Silas safe. Image is getting his own farm here. Sits on, you know, I said before it was a 9 CS lead. It's 13 now. Are we are counting the leads. 13 <laughs> CS in top lane. I mean, sometimes you'll say top die. This is, you know, this is just top diff, all right? 13 <laughs> CS for a ranged melee matchup. I mean, can you can you do better than that, honestly, anyone? No, there's a reason he has his own skin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've had a lull, okay? It's been five minutes say, of, like, yeah. a herald died once. <laughs> yeah. It didn't even kill a tower, so... We got, we got to find some things to fill uh, for a little bit here. This Banshees is on the way for Jojo of Guns. It's okay, sure. Uh, Going to be dealing with the, the Akali on that one. As mid lane is under fire, but Cowie, until the Bloodthirster is done, maybe it doesn't feel quite safe. Again, you can Lantern, but Vi's still going to land on you. So, uh, yeah, not even going for really much here. You can even see the Q was being chanted over the wall. But the respect given, but the, the options grasped by the Beyond Gaming jungler, who's just like, if you do something, I'm over the wall and Akali's going to follow me, so uh, not a bad option, but end of the day, it's just the wave pushed in and cleared back out. But this has kind of been the, the story of the way EG have played, right? It hasn't been a case of, oh, we're going to fully commit to, like, pushing towers. We're just going to play for, for those team fights. We're just going to play for the late game fights. And it has been Danny who's kind of been at the forefront of that. And now we're going to have to see if Kerry can kind of step up. Now, he does have a little bit of a, a cushion, I will say, with how big Jojo is. Going to make things significantly easier. But I still just think for EG, playing for Dragons, playing for these late game fights is completely fine, except with the composition that they have at the moment. Yeah, interesting to see that actually Waco is going for Bloodthirster himself. Um, unless this is Stormraiser, which I doubt. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same build path, uh, because he is the one, like, behind, right? Like, this is a game where you only have limited time as Beyond Gaming, and, and I mean, I'm personally a big fan of Sandmancer. I think it works actually very well on Zaya. She likes attack speed. Uh, but ultimately, choosing a, you know, much more expensive option that keeps him safer when a Kennen and a Lee Sin and a Silas are diving in. Like, I get it. It makes a lot of sense to buy this when Silas takes an Akali ult and dives you with it. Uh, but it doesn't mean his power is going to be slower, and I think he's just behind. He's going to be behind the curve against Kauri this entire game as a result. Yeah, and I mean, look, at the moment, that's the, the biggest problem for Beyond Gaming is that they just don't feel like they're up to the curve at all across the board. Yeah. I mean, Minji, even though he does have that slight CS lead, still is trying to play catch up. You've even got the Banshee's Veil that's coming through from Jojo Pium, which means he's going to be fine. The only one I'm actually half worried about is uh, Likey. Uh, the fact that he stopped off with the Hex Trigger as well means he's going to do good against both solo laners from EG. So maybe he can find some advantages through that. But yeah. overall, it's just EG still with a 4K gold lead for fully in control. So the 4K gold lead flatlining does not give you the most confidence. Rather, playing out the rest of the mid game, they are definitely playing it very, very slowly. They did not get that first break, right? That was grabbed beyond as the cross map for the first herald. So 
Uh, we're on pace for a 34-minute Dragon Soul if DG retain control. Yeah, I was meant to say I'm digging the uh, the reset timers coming through from beyond because, again, you can play for picks here with this composition and they did set around about that 120 mark so that they can get vision early, but having Waco back late means that they kind of have to give up all that advantage that they had. Yep. So now EG are coming back onto the map. They have a little bit more control. So it looks like Hoshi and Minji are just going to hang out in this bush and see like if they can find though. some. I mean, you get any pick leading into the dragon, it's probably just yours in the 5v4. The game is close enough that, like, impact being dead means you win the fight. And I, I don't know if you guys in the LEC very much. We do a lot of ward cheers here in the Americas. <laughs> um, sometimes you get these games where there's no kill for 10 minutes. And it's going down! I'm glad. I'm glad that ward kills, like, transcend languages. Yeah. Right? Over Mexico City. I'm here in Los Angeles. Um, but, uh, yeah, we still got the ward kills, and I'm glad. We don't have enough time to cheer for ward kills okay. in the LPL. Bloodier? <laughs> yeah, it's a little oh, yeah, bit yeah. bloodier. I don't know why I said LEC. Yeah. <laughs> I do both. Yeah, I've, okay. I've dabbled, you know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I only wanted about the LEC spin, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. It's just so we can mark the bird again. So yeah. Give EG a score yeah. on the head. Because I know the LPL doesn't need board clears. So like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the champions are the wars. The dying four hits as well. Speaking of which, kick of the wall does not quite kill the sight stone. That is four wards still alive, functionally, for Beyond Gaming. And now, the Drake standoff is coming in. Husha walks in and wants to zone this one out. Evil Geniuses. Only down one ulti. I feel like this is good for EG though, right? Like good ward control, pinks on both sides, no flank opportunities for Beyond Gaming. And from a front to back uh, situation, I actually favor EG. That's where you can see Minji now starting to see if he can get onto this flank. But Kino low, he can't really set up these engages properly. And Minji gonna wait in the wings. I think Impact can just about see him. 4K health on the Cloud Drake. Who's the smite gonna go for? Jojo might want to front line. Minji is spotted, and he's not going to be part of this fight at all. They land nothing onto him, though. Smite fight comes in, claimed. Well done by Inspire. Two to one on Drake's. EG have not found a kill in forever. But these objectives at least are theirs. Great positioning here for EG as well. That gets clear at the mid wave. Can start to push this in as well. Get a bit of control onto this top side if they want to, too. But look like they are just going to back away. You can see Beyond were very nervous with the fact that uh, EG were on that far inside of the map. A ton of pings went down onto that objective. But everyone just going to back away, reset, and be happy that they managed to nick that dragon right out from underneath the nose of Beyond. Man, that is pretty fortunate. It is interesting just how slowly this game is playing, <laughs> though, because. Yeah, the lead has remained fairly stagnant. It has just been the slow objective stack. And, ooh, impact. I feel like we got baited. Yeah, you when know? When I saw JoJo get five kills, fast. like, oh, I'm so ready, let's go. And then, yep. and then we just stalled. <laughs> just, just channel your inner champion's queue. Just take every fight. Just get in there, you know? Well, choosing to play it slowly. Impact. Stealth long enough, they just forgot he was there. They're like, we can 3v1 him. And they're like, never mind. Impact takes the wave down. Minji's going to be chilling. Inspired was there, of course, to Shadow. Um, in the end, that maybe could have turned around the fight regardless. Zap takes down the cannon minion. 90 gold claimed. But I gotta point out though, DK is up to CS, so better top winner. <laughs> <laughs> we just gotta keep going back to this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, gotta, I gotta say, though, I'm looking at uh, Wako's build. It's interesting to see him still going for that full AD build. Looks like he's just gonna go for that full burst damage off of all the feathers. And I mean, when you're playing with the amount of assassins and just up front yep. burst damage already, it does make a little bit of sense, especially if you have Jojo Pyo and jumping on your face. Just trying to kill that Silas as quickly as possible before he can start getting multiple King Slayers and the survivability could actually work out well. Yep, just on the way to Bloodthirster, look, or, sorry, Bloodthirster's done. On the way to Infinity Edge, so, you know, still on pace. I mean, CS, honestly, pretty good, right? Both AD carries well over 10 CS a minute. Uh, mid laner's not quite so much, they've been doing a lot more roaming, but... This, this is, this is bro play AD carry. I sit in mid lane, I get, I get 13 CS a minute as I crush cannon waves, and, uh, I'll see you in team fights. hopefully I have IE by then. It's like, great, good job. 0-1-1, one, 0-1-2, one, one, Ward goes down, <laughs> dodges the hook! The best mechanics you've seen in the last Woo! three minutes. Let's go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had, to, I had to stop playing support. I couldn't deal with the enchanter meta. Oh, so I was just like, all right, I'm a Silas Wood trick now. I could not deal with my enchanters anymore. You know what's funny, actually? I've opted into it. Did you ever play during the uh, the whole smite top? Yes. Like, yeah, meta? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I willingly played a lot of Janna top. I played a lot of Janna smite top. I had a lot of fun doing that. Because <laughs> you just fight all the time. You're just like, is there a jungler? I'm going to fight to be a red buff. Is there someone else? I'm running away. I'm going to go mid lane. We're 2v1 in this guy. And it was actually a scrapping the whole time. It was great. See, my biggest memory from that was uh, Kingen mm -hmm. dying on Maokai to Bubu's Janna. 
<laughs> the solo lanes nice. from the LPL, and that is my favorite memory from that era, and the only thing I remember fondly about Jana Topley. <laughs> oh, I have another good memory about Jana Topley, actually. Um, at the Season 1 World Championship, uh, we played a Riot versus Pros game. I laned against Juche and oh. first-blooded him as Corky versus Jana Top. So I'm just saying, you know, I used to be good at League of Legends. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm not. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, yeah, I Jana's don't have still a that. good champion. I could never say I was good at League of Legends, to be perfectly honest. That's fine. <laughs> Doesn't matter. This is why I talk about it. You don't yeah, have to be great. good. Yeah, it's great. You don't need hands. <laughs> you got a mouth. But either way, EG now still trying to see if they can get control onto the map. We got pushing mid, pushing top side a little bit. But again, you're not really syncing up these fully, right? Like you can see the wave crash in mid, but impacts a little bit out. They're trying to move over now to see if they can crash onto this tier two as JoJo gets control on top side. But again, I feel like you're just going to be able to kind of match a lot of this at the moment. Although Waco has reset, so maybe a bit of a timing window here for EG. Yeah, they got everyone around here. The guy playing far enough away. The wave is cleared out. And you can see the reinforcements on the minimap are flooding down. But Kauri's like, I can hit this for a bit. As long as you have a pocket lantern. I mean, you weren't really in range of a Vi Q flash. So I think could have played that tower a bit more aggressively. But says, you know what? Eh, mid away from the Drake. And you can see, yeah, right? The, the, the gold lead grew for the first 15 minutes. And then it has been relatively flat. Like, you can't really draw an upward trajectory from 15 to 25 at this point in time. So it has just been like, well, we got two Drakes. And that's good enough for EG. Of course, next one comes up soon, but Beyond Gaming actually going to create maybe a bit of a fork here as they played with the top side. Now, while the Scuttle has been owned by EG, Baron can create a lot of threat that, of course, he just cannot give away. Yeah, it's odd to me that they're kind of setting up on this side of the map, though, because, I mean, everyone on EG now is just going to lean in towards his bottom side and look for a dragon. You even got the push out from JoJo Pion on the uh -oh. side push. He's going to be able to get back with the tower and stop watches the ulti. That is a one-time cooldown gone. Flash play into the hook, and they've caught the jungler. Who should goes down? The defense was there. And it's going to be found out now more for JoJo Pion. Jumps in, finds the second stun, the charm, the safety. Then Beyond stay alive for now, and Minji going to try his best. Kino showing up with the Gale Force, an impact fire in for a second. The flash in for more. Stopwatch keeps them fired alive. A play finds him, and that's going to be the team fight that EG wanted. Three for nothing, and Baron's going to be the next. It was a Hail Mary play from Beyond Gaming, and it fell flat. EG knew it was coming. They leaned to their safe side of the map, and now they're on towards the Baron. Beyond, though, 2v5. Can they make a miracle happen? It's going to require one, honestly, here, because Smite is not up, though, for Inspired. So they do have to kind of play to zone everyone out, unless you get a miracle steal. JoJo waiting the wings, but only 1,000 health makes it tough. Health was getting lower, and now Beyond saying, you know what? We got too low. Off we go. Baron gonna get shut down. Under the kill through to impact. Better top laner after all. And it's time for the Red Bull Baron power play. I'm scared though, Free. Because beyond now, we're gonna get the dragon, which means that if this EG play <laughs> doesn't go fantastic. We're going 10 more <laughs> minutes! <laughs> we, we made up a ton of time here in Europe today, yeah. and now we're taking it all back. But look, EG, I think, in a really good spot, especially if the, the elite resets come through from beyond. But you can see here, right? Kerry knew he was going to be safe as long as he's leaning to the right hand side. Ton of vision there. They'd already pushed out top wave, so they know they didn't even have to check that side of the jungle. So beyond, as we say, through the Hail Mary, but you just really well read by EG. They respond great, and they find the team fight victory. And you know, nice attempts right there, right? Like a lot of heroics coming through here. The double stopwatch is getting burned there. The Q slightly mistimed by Likai does actually land it, and then. Yeah, Minji goes for his entire combo against Lee Sin, who had his stopwatch as well. So that actually is, weirdly enough, a lot of the gold lead paying off. The fact that both Lee Sin and the Felix were able to buy stopwatches and then play that fight out meant they got to immune all of the engaged tools. But now we got a fight coming around the top side. And this boy, I believe, his stopwatch is down, but he's able to get the first couple of stuns to dodge out. And impact is here. And everyone's going to start dying here. A two for nothing so far. Wako tries to live, but the crits come through. A double kill for Kaori. Leekai back inside the base. Inspire wants to find him, but you don't have the damages yet. Side steps away from JoJo if you end up in for a little bit more. And now Kaori would love to get his third kill of the fight. The dive is in, and he's going to get it. Great play from EG. They turn around the pick. JoJo making a play with the charm as well. Means that everyone on Beyond gets stuck. And now they get to walk this one in as Husha, the last man standing. Well, it's going to be 5,000 gold and a Nexus for the first Baron of Evil Geniuses this game. A quick death on the JoJo Pyun kind of ruins his KDA. This is bound to be a victory, but hold on. At least a kill comes through. 
and they're gonna pad for one more bit of stats. Impact's got four. The game is gonna end. Evil Geniuses get another win. Really well played by EG in the early stages, and especially from that man on your screen there, Jojo Pyun. Stepping up huge on the Silas. Gets the play in top, immediately responds to the cross map from beyond on the bottom side of the map, and yeah. finds himself that easy pickup. Really well played from EG. It felt like that play at bottom outer was the play that kind of broke the game open. Okay, EG sent three top, and it's a cross map by beyond. Okay, and the fight was actually a two for one. You know, the Ken and TP'd over and insta died. It was like, all right, this is looking pretty good. But they took so long letting the tower reset that you saw Lee Sin and Silas. They had both recalled and were V-lining down there. And the very end, Vulcan's like, yeah, I'm going to fly in flat to the left because I've got reinforcements the time already. And the cleanup was there to make an extra two. That's so good. Joji found on like six and one or five and one or whatever. And it's like, okay, infinite control now. And, and yeah, they retained it. And I think that's the big one is that when you're playing against composition that can pick you off so well in that mid game, like playing to your strengths in those wards, making sure that you're not getting caught out. You're getting the resets.